Hi there. In this video, I'll talk through how to use our TI-84 graphing calculator to solve some problems. In particular, how we can graph a quadratic function, how we can find the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic function, how we can find the x-intercepts or zeros or solutions of a quadratic function, and then finally, how can we find the y for a given value of x. Let's start with an example. So let's say we're asked to graph y equals negative 3x squared plus 14x minus 8 using our machine. And using the TI-84, these are the steps that you would follow. I'm sure you've done this before, but just for the sake of completeness, here they are. You, you start by pressing the y equals button. This is available on the top left corner of your calculator. And here's where you want to enter the equation. So let's go with negative 3x squared plus 14x minus 8. Let's bring up our calculator. We click on y equals. And here I already have this. So if you have other functions, let's say you click clear, that'll get rid of it and clear out your screen. Here is where you want to type in your function, taking care that you use the negative in front of the 3 instead of the minus. So you would type in negative 3 x, the caret symbol for powers, squared. And now you want to take care that you come down out of the power. So anything you add here will end up adding it in the power. You don't want to do that. So you click back, click delete. And if you click the arrow key, you'll come out of the power. Plus 14x minus 8. And then you press enter. That tells the calculator that this is our function. Now if we go back to the instructions, once we've done that, we have to press graph. This is on the top right corner of your calculator. So if we come here and we press graph, it'll give us a picture. Now oftentimes this is not the window that you have. Uh, you might see it zoomed in or zoomed out. So let me zoom in and let's say that your calculator makes it look like this. So this might be a setting preserved from a previous problem that you did where you maybe needed to zoom in to find an x-intercept. The way you would get out of this is by pressing zoom and then clicking six or Z standard enter. So basically it'll go to a standard zoom or go to a standard window. Let's practice that. So let's say you're looking at this and this is not giving you the proper view that you need. You press zoom in the middle of the screen, top middle, and then you press six. So if you press six, it'll bring us back to the standard zoom view. And that's it, that's how you graph quadratics or really any polynomials that you wanted to using your graphing calculator. Let's continue. Oops, I think I went too far. So next we want to try to find the minimum or maximum value of quadratics. Now, a function that opens up is going to have a minimum. We've discussed this before in past sections. The minimum value can be found by using second, then trace, and then clicking the number three for a minimum. So because our, para our parabola or quadratic open downwards, this is going to be a maximum. The procedure is still the same. We still select uh, second and then trace. So second and then trace. And here, if it had been a minimum, we would have selected three. But because we're looking for a maximum value, we select four. And now it's going to ask us for a left bound. So here, we want to try to help the computer out by going further to the right, somewhat close to where the maximum is. It doesn't have to be precise, but you want to stay towards the left of the actual maximum. And once you've done that, once you've gotten close to it, you want to press Enter. So this tells the calculator, hey, look for an x value or for a y value somewhere between this number. And now it's asking us for a right bound. So again, we use the right arrow key to move further to the right. You want to make sure that you're over the maximum or the minimum, whichever one you're identifying, and then press enter again. And now it's going to ask you, hey, give me a guess so that it doesn't have to work too much. So then you go to roughly where the max is. It doesn't have to be precisely where the max is but you're just telling it, hey, it's probably somewhere close here. Now, if we look at our y values, this y value is 8.3. If I go a little bit to the left, this one's a little bit higher, 
this was 8.30. So I'm going to get higher there. And if I go further to the left, I go down to 8.19. So this is probably a pretty good bet. And we press enter. And then it does its magic and tells you that the maximum will occur at x equals 2.333 repeating. And the y value of the, uh, the maximum value will be 8.3 repeating. So you would enter that here. The vertex would be 2.333 comma 8.333. Next, let's say we're asked to find the x-intercepts of the quadratic function that we're playing with. Again, you want to make sure that you're looking at a standard zoom first. So let's go back. And here we can see that we're looking at uh, both x-intercepts. Let's say that we had zoomed in. So we press 2 for zoom in, and I press enter here. Now you'll notice that in this view or in this picture, I don't know where the x-intercepts are. In fact, I can't even see the x-axis. So it's always good to start with a zoom standard, or number 6, and then, if you are maybe too close or too far, then you want to start zooming in or out. But from scratch, you always want to try to be in zoom standard 6, or zoom standard. Here, in order to find x-intercepts, you press second trace, and then you look for 0. Here's where the vocab comes to help us. We have to remember that x-intercepts are the same things as zeros or the same things as solutions. So if we press second trace and then 0, second trace and then zero is number two that's going to ask us for left and right bounds again so here we want to help our calculator out by picking a number that's to the left of the x-intercept so in this case it'll be below the x-axis and I press enter now it's asking for a right bound so we go above the x-axis and in fact just one hop gives us that and just to prove that it doesn't have to be very precise, let's say we go there. Now it's asking us for a guess. So let's say we guess. We don't even have to guess very well. Let's, in fact, give it a bad guess, something like that. And it's still going to catch it. Now, obviously, the more you help your calculator out, the better the answer is going to be, or the, the faster it's going to work, uh, instead of having to do a lot of computations to come up with the right answer. But in this case, it comes up with a zero of... 0 0.666 repeating, which is a two-thirds, and then a y value of 0, which is expected because, well, it's an x-intercept. Now, let's say we wanted to find the second one. So you'd make note of the first x-intercept. We do the same thing again, second trace. Here we're looking for a 0, so we press 2. Now we want to go all the way to the right. So we're using the right arrow key. Now the left bound is actually going to be above the x-axis because the curve is a decreasing curve here. So my left bound, let's make it something worse. Let's say we pick that, and let's give the right bound something pretty far off as well. Let's say we press enter here once we found the right endpoint, and now it's asking us for a guess. So let's not help it. Well, actually, let's help it this time. 0 0.5 is closer. So, and then we press enter, and voila. It tells us that there's a 0 at x equals 4 and y equals 0. y equals 0 confirms that there is an x-intercept there. So, you would simply list um, 0 point, or 2 thirds comma 0 if you recognize that that's the fraction, and then the second one would be, second one would be 4 comma 0. The last subtopic here is function evaluation, and there's actually two ways to do this. This basically means, hey, I want to know what the y value is when x is equal to negative 2. So there's two ways to do this. One is you press second trace and then value. Value is just the function value or the output of the function. So if we go second trace, value is number 1. That's already selected, so we press 1. And now it gives us a prompt at the bottom, x equals what? So we wanted the x value to be negative 2. So again, take care not to use the minus, but to use the negative key here, negative 2. And then press Enter. And it's going to tell us that the y value is negative 48. So this is using the graph to come up with the answer. Alternatively, you can make a table of values. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you want to make a table of values, 
you probably want to go with the second option. If you just need a single y value, then the first option is good enough. So here we make a table of values by clicking second graph. Let's go back, second graph. And this gives us a table of values for the standard uh, x coordinates. Now you'll notice here that it starts with zero and then it continues going on. Negative two is not part of this, um, of, of these x coordinates. So here, what I actually prefer to do, that's not in the notes, I only just discovered this. If you go to second and then window, which we're looking to do a table set. So if you click second and then window, the independent variable is the input variable. So you wanna scroll down to where it says independent and then select ask. And you'll notice what, or I'll show you what it says here. So you press enter and now it's going to ask you for which value of X you want. So if we go back to second graph, which is going to give us a table, you'll notice that there are no X values here. But the nice thing is you can pick whatever X value you want. And we get negative 48. So if you're looking at a weird function or if you just want to make your own table of values and you don't want to keep asking the computer to, to do the computations for you, let's say I wanted negative seven. So here I just press negative seven, press enter, and it gives me the output value. Again, just to remind you, second window, we're trying to do a table set. And here you wanna come down to where it says independent and then select ask. Now, if you don't want that and you wanna stay in auto, let's go back to it and see what it does. Second graph to look at our table. And here you're back to those standard X values. The only downside is here you cannot pick which X values you want. So if the ones you want are you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, this is wonderful. But if you want, say, negative values and some positives, maybe some decimals perhaps, then second window, change the independent variable to ask, and then it will basically ask you which values you want. Or you can start your table start a little bit earlier. So let's say you start your table at negative 6, and then you press Enter. Now it's going to start all your x coordinates at negative 6. But then again, it's only a jump of 1. If you wanted to change that, you can go back to table set. So your table starts at negative six and the increment of the table value is one. So here, if we change this to say 0 0.5, it will start your table at negative six and it'll bump it up by a half every single time. So let's take a look at this second graph. And here we go, negative six, negative 5.5, negative five. So instead of bumping up by one, it bumps up by a half. But again, here, you don't have the freedom to select the X values that you want. Uh, maybe you wanted 1.25 here, and you don't have the ability to do that. So I personally always find that if I go second window, I personally prefer to just have ask under my independent, and then I can plug in whatever X values I need for a problem. And that's it. So here you would just put in negative two comma 48. Now, for these remaining questions, these are all nitro problems. I feel like I'm skipping a page. Page two. Why is page three not showing? Let me exit out of full screen. Yeah, so these uh, nitro problems, these are the ones I'd like for you to try on your own ahead of class time. And here, again, we're given a polynomial just like with the problem that I did. And here the question says to graph this using your gra graphing calculator, then find the zeros like we just discussed, evaluate the function at negative three and five. So here's where you can practice whether you want the auto independent variable or if you want uh, the calculator to ask you what you want. And then also find the minimum value. And then similarly, the other nitro problems follow. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you in class.